I'm Ibrahim Jarso. I work in uh, Feed the Future Kenya Livestock Market Systems Program. It's a five-year uh, USAID-funded project, which is uh, implemented in northern counties of Isiolo, uh, Garissa, Wajia, Marsabit, and Turkana. Uh, I came to to understand or to 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 meet the need to have a discussion on, on range management because within that project there is a a deliverable on uh, strengthening uh, natural resource management, uh, both the water and range lands. Uh, it has aspect on also conflict management and drought risk management. So there is a lot of need for the aspect of mapping of these resources for communities within these areas to properly uh, plan on how they graze and use their water resources. Uh, and uh, we needed some support as, a, as an institution or as a program uh, to implement this. And uh, through our partnership with uh, uh, Partners for Resilience and Economic Growth, as convened by the USAID uh, uh, among the implementing partners that work within the Northern Kenya region, we had a discussion with the Regional Center for Mapping Resources for Development. And, uh, they had all the skills and capacities that we need to map resources within the communities. And um, through our engagement as PREG, we started something on uh, uh, looking at the rangelands, probably observations, other observations on the areas which we work. And uh, we got introduced to rangeland decision support tool, a tool that helped us to uh, assess the vegetation condition uh, of these rangelands at different times of the season. Uh, within the communities where we work, uh, pastoralists use also resources at a, at a particular time of the year in a different place. So it was very necessary for communities and also for institutions that work with communities to understand how the vegetations are at different times of the season. And uh, the tool really helped in identifying how situation looks at different times of the year. So initially, uh, communities were uh, traditionally surveilling lands. Uh, they, they send individuals to go around and look at how the conditions look before they move. Uh, and sometimes they identify local scouts to look at how situations are going around. So the, the technology came about and, and reduced that uh, amount of resources or time that communities put in to surveil land, although it's also very necessary to, uh, on aspect of governance to surveil and also steward the land. But uh, it really helped in, uh, the, when the technology came in, it really helped to, to understand how to, to really observe how situations are at different times of the year. So before it has been uh, the traditional ways, which were not very productive, and uh, it was very time intensive, uh, resource intensive and also very uh, time costly. But now with the technology, we can, uh, we can now easily observe how situations are. And uh, this was uh, achieved through partnership with the Regional Center for Mapping, RCMRD, uh, and uh, the institution which I work for, Masico, which also implements that uh, Kenya Livestock Market Systems program, got into an MOU with the organization to help in the aspects of mapping, while uh, the, the institution also supports in the logistics probably on the ground as mapping can be done. So what I recommend probably in future that we do, uh, the mapping of resources as we have already done with the, the, the wards that we work in, around 15 of them. Uh, in northern Kenya, if you look at the, the scope of the maps that we have, uh, there's an, a small area which has been already mapped out of the bigger span of the northern rangelands. So we recommend, if possible, that the institution can move a step in mapping other areas. Through our program, we feel we will be covering a scope of around 24 wards within these five counties. And uh, we, will be, we will really appreciate if the institution can give us uh, a helping hand in mapping resources within all these areas. Yeah, so uh, the, the CIDPs, when they came up, uh, uh, there were there were very minimal information on the ground on on the ground cover on the observations on the ground, but uh, with the regional with the, with the um, rangeland decision support tool, 
you can easily show uh, situations uh, or vegetation change over years. So within the CIDPs, if you look at them now, probably the relationship between the, the technology and how communities have interacted with it and developed maps can be observed even in, like in the Cielo CIDP. We have areas where communities have mapped uh, resources, uh, grazing areas, which, are, which, which is also within the CIDP. The areas where people mapped even uh, minerals, which are also in, captured in the CIDP in areas where uh, they are working on issues about uh, natural resources. It, it made it easy for communities. It has been a challenge initially to, uh, to scout these rangelands, to uh, manage how healthy is it, you, the health of the rangeland also. Uh, for you to understand whether the rangeland is healthy or not, you need to frequently observe. Initially, it's very intensive, uh, cost intensive and time intensive also to look, to go around in those vast rangelands to observe how they are most of the time. But within the observations that the, 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 the technology provides, the rangeland decision support tool, you can see anomalies that happens with change in, in, in how it is used and even change with weather. So I think uh, all those new informations were initially not there that can inform how people plan, uh, how they use grazing, and even how people plan on how they, they are utilizing the vegetation. So it really brought about uh, a new uh, set of information that can inform planning at the county level and even use of this rangeland at the community level. I think I think uh, one of the uh, everything good has also some small small uh, hiccups which probably needed to be improved. One, uh, uh, the the tool is very applicable and and easy to use for a person who understands technology. But people at different levels have different capacities. In most of these areas where we work in, uh, the communities are largely not very literate. So in, mo in many of these counties, over 70% of uh, the, the community residents are not that literate. So the technology looks a bit uh, uh, very conversant to a person who, uh, who is well, uh, who is somebody who, who is tech savvy, somebody who has a good smartphone. And uh, probably for an elder to engage with it, it's, uh, from experience I've seen elders confusing where uh, some of the features are. So uh, I think uh, to improve on that, probably we need to uh, improve the quality of the observation, uh, make also uh, some of those uh, photos, those observation photos accessible to uh, organizations or institutions that work with communities on issues about rangelands, because it's also very costly to get uh, a very fresh or a new real-time photo of, of those rangelands. So if we can get informations that are uh, very clear, real-time, on how different species grow within rangelands, this will be, I think, will the, the, the situation will be better than how good already it is.